Hello and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this episode of the Drive Game series, we're going to look at basic toy drive. Okay, so we are doing a game um, which gets our dog to run out to a toy. This is going to be one of our fundamental skills for building up drive because we're going to obviously be putting toys out to get our dog to run. <laughs> I didn't throw it, my love. I didn't throw it. Okay, this is a game you can play with your puppy. Um, to be honest, you could play this quite early on at a gentle level. Again, I would not overdo this because you've got to be careful on puppy joints. And one thing I would say to you is if you're doing this with a puppy, um, I would not be asking them to go too far. I just want, at this stage with a puppy, I would just want them to understand that the toy, whether it's a food-based toy or whether it's a, a toy toy, like a ball or a tuggy, I just want them to understand that they can run out to it. So you wouldn't be worrying too much how fast they go at this moment in time. It's just about building value. Once they get older, we can start moving that on safely. Again, this is a game that we want to be doing on a surface that's not too slippery. It not mustn't move under them. It's all about building that confidence. Right, I know you both want to do this game. I know you both want to do this game. So can you come here, Sparrow? And Swift, let's start with Swift, okay? You can have a go as well. Okay. Look at them. Can you see we do this game? Right, okay. So we've all got harnesses on. You could do this with a collar on as well. So I'm going to put to start with, and obviously these girls know what this is, but if we hadn't got it, I'd start with the toy out there. Now, you'd obviously, if you're using this with a puppy, and you'd obviously use a toy they already know a little bit, you want something that they are interested in. You won't put something out there that they didn't know. If you're using a treat ball for the first time, what might be a good idea is to open it up and show them the treat so that they can see it and know where to get it. And that just saves them having to fight with it. Because if you get out there and they don't know what they've got to do with the treat ball, and you would actually have to teach them how to use a treat ball. If they don't know what to do, then um, that's going to cause issues. Right. So we're going to do it the same as always. Restrained. Gentle restraint. Where's it? <laughs> I know. Swift, where's it? This is a bit hard when you've got two dogs. Okay, ready? Get it. Good girl. So get it is my release word, meaning you can get the toy. What we're also doing with this game is we're teaching them when they can get the toy, when they can't. So I obviously had a hand in Sparrow's collar that time, but what you can teach them to do is you do a little bit of uh, placement of leave it. So get it means you can get what's in there. If I don't say get it, you can't get it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I know full well with both of these. If I say just let them go, they're going to eat out of there. But when we're doing stuff, I can usually get them to stop so that if I don't say get it, they don't get it, but it's still a bit hit and miss. But you can start building that up. So you can build it up so that if you send them and they don't do it, you can ask them, you can go say down or oops or something you want them to do other than go to that toy. So they learn that if you haven't said get it, they don't get it. Okay, Sparrow, do you want your turn this time? So I've moved out a bit further this time. Ready, get it. Good girl. And I closed it that time because she knows how to do that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to knock your head. I didn't mean to knock your head. I know. So we're going to keep building up the distance. We don't need much distance because this all this is about is drive to toy. Can you come here, Sparrow? You're there. So this is about drive to toy. So we just want them to focus on that toy. You need to turn around, my love. Yeah? Ready? Ready, get it. Good girl, Swift. And we just want them driving out to that toy because that's going to be our key to, uh, to the rest of the drive games. So let's show you what it looks like when I don't immediately say get it. Okay, uh, who's going to do this? Do you want to come over here, Sparrow? When you go down, good. Okay. This might be too much to play with a very small puppy, but probably when you get to six months, you could. So I'm gonna put the toy there. 
Now you can see that Swift already knows that um, just because it's there doesn't mean she gets it. Now I'm just going to see what happens. I am got good girl. I want to ask her to do something and then I'll release it to get that toy. So you're sitting down. Can you sorry, sit? Yes. You got an itch. We have a lot of allergies in the summer. Okay, sit. Good. Uh, sit. Get it. Get it. Good girl. You can see we're almost like, what? You really? You can let me have the toy? Good girl, Sparrow. Now, some people get really cleverless. They can actually release their dog to get the toy and then ask them to do a down and the dog will do the down. Now, I haven't got to that stage. And to be honest with you, I had a little bit of a problem with this one in that um, I would put a toy out and say she did something wrong. Say it was at training and the trainer would be there. We'd put the toy out and say it was weaves and she missed a weave pole. The trainer would like put a foot on or pick the toy up. She then wouldn't drive to the toy. So I'm very cautious about that. I'm not overdoing that. That is something to bear in mind when you're doing your games. You need to balance that drive to the toy versus self-control. So if there's any risk that your dog is going to start going, I can't go to that toy, you need to build more value for going to the toy than vice versa. And um, with Sparrow, it really doesn't matter. She, she will go to that toy as many times as you like. It won't matter if someone's trying to pick it up or not. But with her, that was very noticeable. And even now, if a trainer is stood near the um, toy, she hesitates. So that is something I had, I didn't realize was a problem until it came up. Swift. Okay, come here. Okay, what are we gonna do this time? I'm gonna put a little bit of restraint on her so it's a bit more harder and say, I'm gonna release her. This could go wrong. Down, down. Oh, so you see, do you see? She went, that isn't the right word. That isn't the right word. Down, get it. Good girl, Sprout. You could see, she goes, that isn't the right word. She didn't say get it, but I don't know what she wants. <laughs> good girl. Yes, I know, Sparrow, and you were very good too. So you can see you could play all sorts of games, but can you see how much that made her want the toy as well? Because you could say, oh, so I want that toy so bad, but she's making me do something. <sighs> so it's all about building up that, that interest and value for the toy. And that also demonstrated something else, and that is, you can call it what you want, stickiness, I sometimes call it that. It's that looking at something, an object, and not being able to do your job, because that is such a high value reward there. So you can see, she couldn't go on a down because the toy was there, and I know she doesn't want me to get the toy, but I can't really do a down. So that's something you might find when you're setting up for weights and something, is the toy is such high value that uh, your dog struggles to do, um, any other behaviors around it. That is, doesn't mean that you take the toy away. It means you have to work through it by building up how far away you can have the toy and get them to do something, then build it up. Right, you, do you want to try it? You are like, she's like, oh my word, Sophie. Okay, come here. <laughs> okay, I got the spaniel. Down, already. Oh, down, down, but oh, see, that ain't gonna happen. So you can see with Sparrow, she's like, yeah, well, it's just there. I'm gonna eat it. Not as good as the Sheltie on that one, are you? But you know, they all have their different levels, don't they? And food is very high value for you, isn't it? So you're gonna mess around with this game. You're gonna keep building it. It's something that you'll keep building value for. If you lose value at any time in your tour, you go back to this game, you put it in again, you keep building it up. So you can do this with small puppies, but do it close. <clears throat> As they get older, you can do it slightly further away, but don't overdo this. And one other thing I'd like to say to you is I don't use balls in the sense that I don't use, I wouldn't throw a ball out and ask the dog to run out and do a turn to bring me the ball. I am because that is actually quite hard work on the wrists, especially on a young puppy, there's no way I would do that. So I want it to be a straight run out and then a stop. But again, I try not to do too much. I don't want them to be going out and doing too much like this breaking when they're young. So they get older, they've got a bit more resilience, you can do more of that. But keep it short and sweet, don't overdo it. Little fun game you can play in the evenings. 
on an appropriate surface and just build up that value for a toy. I hope you've enjoyed this Everyday Canines video. If you have, you might like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.